Okay, so we have here the first exercise related to Shannon's entropy. So as you see, well, we have a, com uh, a computer which is continuously sending numbers in hexadecimal, yet in a network without screens. A data analyst observes that the probability of receiving the number 45 is 8 times higher than that of any other number. Calculate the entropy. Okay, so we will use Shannon's entropy formula. And we have the following. Okay, so <clears throat> we have 16 numbers and we put the numbers here on this line and on the second line we have the probabilities. Okay, so we, we have read here that the number 45 appears 8 times higher than, uh, than the rest of other numbers. So that means that the first 15 numbers will all receive P, while our 16th number which is 45, we receive the probability 8p. This means that 15p, because of the first 15 numbers, plus 8p will receive, will compute the value of 1 and from here it results p which is oh sorry which is this one So this would be um, the computation we we put one divided to twenty three. And using Shannon's entropy, we have the following formula. Again, this is for the first 15 numbers, and this part is for the 16th number. And if we would have to, to compute this, it would give us uh, around 4.52. We have the following exercise. A chemist is trying to make a substance that helps with the longevity of rubber. They have four elements to mix with different levels for each, 12 for fluorine, eight for chlorine, six for iodine, and five for silicon. Taking into account that the recipes are equiprobable, what is the average quantity of information contained in a single recipe? 
we have to com to compute the entropy for each of these four components for fluorine, chlorine, iodine and silicon. The result for the first will be 4 bits, then for chlorine, the result will be 3 bits, then for iodine, It will also be 3 bits. And for silicon, it will again be 3 bits. Now, if we sum up all these four elements, the bits of all these four elements, we will have 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, we will have a total of 13 bits. So the average quantity of information contained in a single recipe is 13 bits. Okay, our next exercise is related to hemming. In this exercise, we need to compute the hemming distance between this number in hex and this number in hex. First, we will take each number separately and we will convert it from hex to binary. The value of 8 in binary is 1, 0, 0, 0. And the value of A in binary is 1, 0, 1, 0. So this number in binary will result 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. We do exactly the same thing also for the second number. Now we will rewrite both numbers in binary. And we will look which number is different which um, which number is different from each other. For example, we have here a 0 and here a 1, so we will mark this because they are different, the bits. Also here, the bits are different, here we have a 1, here we have a 0. Here we have two zeros, so we won't mark them. Here we have two ones, so we won't mark them. Here we have a 0 and a 1, we will mark them. Here a 0 and a 1, and we will mark them. And for the rest, nothing. So we will mark with an X 
the places where the bits differ and we will put this sign where the bits are identical. Now, if we sum up the number of axes, we will see that the number is 4. So the result is that the hemming distance is 4 in this case. In the next exercise, we need to figure out how many parity bits are found in a Hamming code of 500,000 bits. So, first we will have to find um, which uh, number at the power of 2 is smaller than 500,000. For example, we know that 10 at the power of uh, 2 at the power of 10 equals with uh, 1024. 2 at the power of 20 means 2 at the power of 10 multiplied by 2 by the power of 10 it means 1024 multiplied by 1024, which equals with <coughs> it equals with one million eighty four thousand five hundred seventy six. So the number we are searching for must be between. 10 at the power of uh, 2 at the power of 10 and 2 at the power of 20. For example, 2 at the power of 15 equals with 2 at the power of 10 multiplied with 2 at the power of 5. It means 1024 multiplied by 32, which equals with. Thirty two thousand seven hundred sixty eight. So our number should be between two at the power of twenty and two at the power of fifteen. We will try with two at the power of seventeen, which is two at the power of fifteen multiplied with two at the power of of twelve uh, of uh, of two, sorry. This equals We can figure out from here that if we will have to multiply it again by 2 at the power of 2 it would mean to multiply it again by 4 and this result would be for sure bigger, bigger than 500 um, thousand so in this case we will not multiply it by 4 we will multiply it by 2 so we will compute 2 to the power of 18 It is clear that if we will have to multiply it again by 2, it will be more than 500,000. Uh, so in this case, <coughs> the number we were searching for is 2 at the power of 18. Because this, this uh, computation is smaller than 500,000. This means that from 2 at the power of 0 to 2 at the power of 18, we have in total 19 Hemming bits.
in this exercise we will have to transform the decimal number 1948 <clears throat> in code 841 code xs3 and gray code we will first do the conversion in code 841 and to do this we will have to to write each of the of the components of our decimal number we will have to rewrite it in binary so we have one which is zero 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 one nine which is this one and the same for the others To do the conversion in access tree, we will have to add for each component of the of the binary code we 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 write here we we wrote here for each of these components for each four of them we will have to add. A zero zero one one so that would be a three in binary we will have to add one for each of these components and its result will be the value in access tree so it will be like the following I will now delete this one here. And now we will also have to to make the the conversion in gray code. In gray uh, to to do this we will have to to look at the at the code in eight four two one and we will have to so the 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 first component we will be looking from left to right so we'll begin here and we will be going in this direction and we will firstly look at the first element the first element we will write it as it is and then for each of the next element we will have to make the addition between these two elements so the addition between these two elements will be the element on this position which will be 0 plus 0 0 then 0 plus then 0 plus 0 0 then 0 plus 1 1 we will do the same also for all the other components and we will have the following result So this will be the, the solution for our exercise. In this exercise, we have to make two computation in code 8421. We need to add the numbers 1998 with 3959 and then subtract from 1032 the number 974 
we will firstly do the first computation. In order to do this, we will firstly have to convert the numbers from decimal to binary, meaning to code 8, 4, to 1. Here we will make the computation for each of the first four bits. We will firstly compute these four bits, then this, then this, then this. Here will remain one because one plus one equals zero, and we have one in addition. Here again we will have one okay so because here we have a one and the one in addition and because here the result is greater than 8, we will have to apply the correction factor, which is 0, 1, 1, 0. And we will apply this for each of these where we had a problem. So here, here, and here. And we will make the computation again. Here we will have 1 in plus, okay, we will ignore this one here in this case because we cannot apply the, the correction factor more than once, and now we will have to, to see the result, we will take again each of these four sequences and we will convert them from binary to decimal. Here the result is 7, 5, 9 and 5. So I will cycle them so that we can ignore that one in the middle. 
So the result should be 5,957. And if we, if we make the addition here, we will see that the result also in decimal will be 5,957. So in this exercise, we have to subtract the number 974 from the number 1032. And we will have to do this in code 8421. As you, have, as you can see, I already did the computation in decimal. The result will, uh, should be 58. And now we will have to do the same computation in binary. And the result should give us at the end the number 58, but in binary. First, let's convert these numbers in code 8421. The result should be the following. 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 1. And 0, 0, 1, 0. For each of the numbers from here, we wrote the equivalent in binary here. The same we do also for 974. And we will have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Now let's do the subtraction. This should be the following. Here should be 0, then 1, then here we will put an 1 on 1, and here a 1, here a 1 then, and a 1, here another 1, and a 1, 1, and a 1, 1, and a 0, 1, and a 1, Then here we will have another one. And by subtracting here it would be 0. Then here 1. And here 1. Here 1. And by subtraction here 1. Then here will be another one. And the 0. And then here it will be 0. Because we will have this no more. And 0, 0, 0. Now we'll have to apply the correction factor on this one, on this one, and on this one. On this two, we will apply it because the value exceeds 9 in decimal. And here we will apply it because we used this once here. The correction factor is 6, or uh, in binary, this is 0, 1, 1, 0. We can apply the correction factor just once. And now we will do, uh, once again, the subtraction. Here we will have 0, 0, 0, 1. Here 1, 0, 1, 0. And here it will be just zeros, but I will not uh, write it anymore, the, the result. Here we have now this and here the value is 8 because 1000 in um, binary equals 8 in decimal and 0, 1, 0, 1 in binary equals 5 in decimal. So it checks the result 58 from here is the same as the one from here. Okay, so in the next exercise is related to, to Boolean algebra. So, um, John is looking for a dog and his choice depends on three aspects, size, uh, fluffy hair, and blue eyes. If the dog is little, then the value of x will be 1. If the dog has the attributes that correspond to y and z, then the values of y and z will be 1. He normally wants a little dog, but if he finds a big one, 
that has fluffy hair and blue eyes, he's willing to take him home. Also, it's not enough for the dog to be little, it must have at least one of the characteristics between Y and Z to be accepted by John. Find the Boolean function that explains this scenario and simplify it. Okay, so first of all, we have to, to draw the truth table. So John has three attributes he's looking at. And we will note them with X, Y, and Z. And we have the following values. Okay, and for Z, Okay, now here we will put F and according to, to the preferences of John, the function will have the following results. Okay. Now here we will also compute the mean terms. And the last one. Okay. Now we will be looking at the places where F equals one. And we will have to work with the mean terms where, um, where F equals one. So F <coughs> will be equal with M3 plus M5 plus M6 plus M7. So it will be equal to the following. Okay, so here we have YZ and here we have YZ, so we will write the following.
we know that the result of this is 1 and um, we will write the following Here we apply the common factor, and we will do this. Uh, and uh, we, we did this also um, up here. We apply the common factor. Here we apply again the common factor. And this here, this is the simplified function. So it is equal with our result. In this exercise, um, it's similar with the previous one. So Henry asks you to make a pizza for him. Besides pizza dough and tomato sauce, you have three ingredients at your disposal. Mozzarella, pepperoni and ham. Henry imposes the following conditions. Mozzarella is mandatory. A pizza cannot have both pepperoni and ham. Find the Boolean function that explains this scenario and simplify it. Again, we have to draw the truth table. Okay, and now based on the conditions imposed by, by Henry, we will also have the function with the following terms. In this case, we will also again do the mean terms.
again as in the previous exercise we look just at at the mean terms where the function is equal with one so here here and here so we will be looking at m4 m5 and m6 and our function will be the addition of this three terms here m4 m5 plus m6 we will again apply the the common factor between some of these elements we will apply the common factor between this and this and we will write the following we know that this will equal with one because we're using the Morgan rules we will be applying again the common factor And it will result us this form, which is the simplified function. In this exercise, we have the following logical circuit. And we have to write the simplified form of the Boolean function that is represented here. We see that here we have the OR operation. Which we know it is represented by the plus. Um, sign and here we have four end operations which we know that the end operation is represented by a multiplication so our function will actually be a sum of four multiplications and the multiplications are actually written here we have this one over here, this one, this one, and this one. So I will rewrite them here. We will apply the common factor between these two and we will have the following. Here it will be 1. We will apply again the common factor on a z this time. We 
we will apply again the common factor on y this time and this is our simplified function in this exercise again we have a logical circuit and we have to write the simplified form of the function again we have here an end we have here an or so we know that the end function is uh, represented by a multiplication the or function is represented by addition and here we have a not <coughs> which is a negation so our function will be a multiplication between a sum and a negation and i will write it down here And this one we have to, to simplify it. Now <clears throat> we can break this exercise, I mean this function, in two parts and we will take each one separately. We know from the Morgan's from uh, the Morgan's rule that this one here is equal to to this one without any negation. So we will rewrite this with this one here and we also know that this one so the second the the second part is equal to x negated plus y negated so we will rewrite our f function in the following way. And this is the simplified version of the function. Okay, we have the following exercise where we need to compute n1 plus n2 in fixed point if we know that n1 is 63 and n2 is minus 84. Okay, so let's write them again down here. We know that this computation should theoretically give us minus 21. We will firstly do this computation in direct code. Let's first of all transform 63 in binary. Okay, and let's also transform 84 in binary.
Okay. So let's rewrite them down here. Okay, don't forget to pay attention to the sign bit. Uh, for 63, the sign bit is zero because it's a positive number and for minus 84, the sign bit is one because it is a negative number. If you make the, the computation between these two numbers, the result will be the following. And here we will have a one that remains. So this this here is the result in direct code. Now, okay, now we will do in indirect code <coughs> the same computation. For 63, because it is a positive number, it remains the same in indirect code and for minus 84 we will um, we will invert some of the bits actually we, we, we will invert all of these bits we will invert them here, so it will be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, sorry, so 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And if we compute this the result will be the following okay and in this case, we don't have to invert the bits. Now we will also do the computation for complementary code. In complementary code, the um, the positive number remains the same, so 63, we will just copy it. And for min minus 84, we will do the following. So, starting from right to left, All the, the, the null bits will stay the same until we reach 1, until we reach the first one. And all the bits that are before this one, including 1, will stay the same, while the others will be inverted, including the sign bit. We will invert also the sign bit. So the result will be the following. So as you see, this part remains the same while this part got inverted. And if we do the computation, the result will be the following.
and also in this case we do not invoke the bits okay in this exercise we have to compute minus n1 minus n2 in fixed point if we know that n1 is 24 and n2 is minus 99 so minus n1 minus n2 we can also write it as minus n1 plus minus n2 which it would actually mean the same as writing 20, minus 24 plus 99 we will do this computation firstly in direct code Okay, we firstly know that 99, so minus 24 plus 99 should equal 75. So this result, it should be 75. Now, we will take both 20, uh, 24 and 99 separately and we will see uh, the results in binary. Okay, so the result is one one zero zero zero. So it is equal with two at the power of four plus two at the power of three. So 16 plus 8 it is 24. So the computation is correct. And because it is minus 24, we also have to, to include the, the, um, the sign bits and also the other bits until we reach 8 bits. So this would be the result no sorry actually this would be the result so i will rewrite it here now we also have to do the same thing for 99 Okay, so the result is the following. Where should I write it? Okay, I'll put it here. Okay, so it is the result should be this one. So it'll be 64 plus 32 plus 2 plus 1 let's see if it checks so yes it it checks i verified it so this is the result and we also need to put the the sign bit we know that 99 is is positive in this case so it will have a zero 
has assigned it. So let's rewrite it here. Okay. Okay, now let's do the computation. Okay, and this is the result in um, direct code. Okay, now let's also do the computation in indirect code. So we know that um, positive numbers in indirect code will stay the same so we can copy the value for 99 because it will be the same and for for negative numbers we have to invert the bits so the result will, uh, including the sign bit so the result will be the following Okay, now let's do the computation. Okay, this is the result in indirect code, and we have to, to invert the bits. And when we invert the bits, all the bits will be inverted but without the sign bits so this these numbers will be inverted so the final result will be 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 now let's also do the computation for complementary code Okay, so the the results for ninety nine again it will be the same because it is a positive number. So let's just copy it from up. And for comp uh, for um, for negative numbers, it works like this. We have to to check from right to left, and all the the null bits until we reach the first one bit. All this will remain unchanged while everything that follows this one will be inverted so the result will be the following of course including the the sign bit we need to invert everything and now the rest we copy it and let's make the computation Also, in this case, we need to invert the bits. And we will invert all bits, starting from right, all bits. Um, so it will be unchanged, all null bits, including the first one bit so this one 
everything that is before the first one bit will stay unchanged. In this case, it is just one. Everything from here will change, but without the sign bit. So the result will be the following. Okay, in this exercise, we have to compute the, uh, the following number. So this one, in floating point, single precision. We know from the Fury that we have the following di uh, diagram, which I will try to, to draw here. Here, we have the sign bit. Here we have this one, the, the function, and here we have the mantisa. So let's firstly take the number one 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 zero zero point one one zero zero. And this number we have to multiply it by 2 at the power of and now we need to see how many positions we need to move this point so 1 2 3 4 so it's 2 at the power of 4 actually just one moment we need firstly to to put the, the point in the in the correct position and then multiply it by 2 at the power of 4 ok um, the result which we have after the point so this part is the mantissa so let's write it here. One one zero zero one one zero zero. <clears throat> but we know that um, in this case we need to to calculate to make it single precision. So because it is a single precision, we need to have uh, on the matissa twenty three bits. That's the, um, the quantity of bits which uh, the mantissa has. So we have here 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we need to add zeros until we reach 23. Okay, <clears throat> and now For this part, there is a formula which says that the function is equal to the exponent, so in this case it would be 4, plus 2 at the power of 8 minus the uh, minus 1 and here we'll put another minus 1 actually this is noted with car And this eight would be would would be um, the 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 function of the of the exponent, which 
in uh, in single precision it is always eight it always has the value of eight for double precision it would be 11 and for extended double precision it would be 15 so from the theory we know that in this case it is 8 and we will make the computation so 4 plus 2 to the power of 7 minus 1 So our result is 131 and if we, will, if we would have to convert from decimal to binary, it would have the following result. This would be the value in binary and we have to take this value now and write it here and the sign bit because it is a positive number will be zero now we have to 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 look here up and we have to take each four bits starting from right of from from left sorry starting from left to right okay and the result in hex will pretty much be the following so we have 0 1 0 0 which is 4 then we have 1 then we have um, 14 which in um, in hex it this will be just one moment This will be E Okay Then we have the value of 6 And then we have zeros. Let's see how many zeros we'll have, just one moment. It should be another four zeros here. And here it is a six, just one moment. Okay, so this is the result in hex in this exercise we have to compute this decimal number in floating point again um, the same as in the previous exercise I will draw the diagram where we will have here the sign bit here we will have the CAR and here we will have the mantissa and we will have to compute all of these but first we will have to transform our decimal number into a binary number
So our number will be 11100 in binary. And the other part, we will have to, to compute it now. And we will stop here because the number is growing a bit too big and it will take a while to actually reach the, the end. So this number in binary will be 0 0.1 Okay, so this is the number, just one moment, I will move this down here. Okay, so this is the number in, in, uh, in binary. <clears throat> Now let's take the, the entire number and write it, re rewrite it down here, so 24.013 in decimal equals in binary the number 11100.1000. Now let's see how many steps we need to move this to reach this position. So we have to move it one, two, three, four times. So we'll have the following number. Mm 
multiply by 2 at the power of 4. Okay. This part will be our mantissa. We will have to rewrite it, so let's let's note it to know what it means. And let's rewrite it up here. And uh, let's also put the, the necessary steps until it reaches 23. So it has a couple of more bits until 23. Okay, because, uh, because here for the mantissa, for, uh, for the single precision, we need to, to have a total of 23 bits for the mantissa okay now let's compute the car so the car is equals exponent which in this case is 4 plus 2 at the power of 8 because we, we are in single precision so it is 8 minus 1 and here minus 1 so it is 4 plus this it equals one three one, which uh, it is in decimal here, but we want to have this result in binary, so the result will will be the following. Okay, this is the result in binary, and this we will have to put it up here. This will be our CAR, and because we have a negative number, we'll put the sign bit 1. And now we will have to convert it into, into binary. We have to, uh, into, into hexadecimal, sorry. We have to pick each four bits and group them. Okay, and I will write the result actually here so that it is more visible for me. It is C one E zero one. A eight and it should all also be another eight, uh, uh, another another zero. Sorry. Okay, and this is our result in hex. Okay, so in this exercise, we, we need to, to solve this function. Um, I will read now what we need to do. So, being the below function f, use the truth table and cannot to simplify it. So this would be the function, and here down here I wrote the um, I already wrote the the um, the Carnot table, which we will use to um, to find the solution to the function. So 
these here are our mean terms and uh, we will take these mean terms and we will put them here in the table so we have uh, m0 m1 m2 and m3 m5 m7 m8 m9 m10 and m11 and we need to group all these terms together so we know that these terms need to be grouped in um, in a number which is a power of um, of two we could for example and it needs to be the the maximum we could group this and this separately but it would be wrong because it would not be the maximum we need to group these four terms with these four terms so we will have eight terms that would be two at the power of three and then we also have these two terms which we need to to group them somehow we cannot group them just the two of them we need to to group them together with these two above and we will have these four groups of mean terms okay we will note this with so the first group of eight we will note it with two well with one and this we will note it with two and we will write a solution uh, the, the solution for each one of them so for one we have the the following solution It would be B multiplied by actually just B, it's just B here. And for the second, for the second, we have A multiplied with d so our f function will be a d plus b And this would be uh, our solution. Okay, in the following exercise, again we have an f function, <clears throat> and we need to we, we need to do the following. Being the glow function f, use the truth table and Carnot to simplify it. Again, we will have to draw the Carnot table. Here we put A, B, and C, D.
and we will also note the table Okay, and now you know, in this case we don't have mean terms, we have max terms actually, which we will have to, to insert them in the table. And we have on the second position, on the third, eighth, ninth, eleventh, and the 12th, 13th, and 15th position. And now again we have to, to group this and we need to group them in a number which is the maximum power of 2 in this case. Um, these which are here up, we will group them together like this. The ones that are here down, we cannot group them all together because 6 is not a power of 2. So we will group 4 and once again these 4. And we will note them with numbers. This is the first, the second. This is the third. And we will write the relationship between these down here. Okay, so looking at the first one, we have A plus B plus C. At the second one, we have A plus D And at the third one, we have A plus C. And now the function will be the multiplication between these three relationships. So it will be A plus B plus C multiplied by A plus D multiplied by A plus C. And this is our final solution for this exercise.